All right, in this video, we're gonna be working on the rear brakes of a 2019 Chrysler Pacifica. Pretty similar process to almost any vehicle, though. Um, this vehicle, though, our family affectionately refers to as the racing minivan. Uh, but in any case, first you get your wheel off. Um, in this case, I'm also putting the winter tires on because, unfortunately, it's getting cold here. Um, and then once that's off, then you need to remove the caliper. And that is done. So you might be tempted to look at these bolts here that mount the bracket. Don't remove the bracket, just remove the caliper. And in this case, there are little plastic caps right around here. And those you can just kind of take out with your fingernail, kind of like that. And cap like that. There's two of them. And then within there is a 7 millimeter hex head. So you just get ratchet or even an allen would be fine but having a little extra leverage is good and then seven millimeter hex head and then remove that remember it's facing the other way so instead of turning to the right you're turning to the left because it's actually kind of backwards now if you had a really rusty situation in here i'd probably put a little penetrating lube in there for a day or two to let that sit so you don't you know break these off uh, but in any case, this one came free without a lot of trouble. So we'll go ahead and get those off. All right, so now that those two caliper bolts are loosened up, and I'll come in here and just kind of back them, back the bolt up a little bit with a screwdriver with your finger just to keep it from locking up in that recess there. And the next step is we need to get this clip off here. So within here is a little u-shaped uh, curve to the bracket in there and that needs to be brought out from the inner part of this piece here so to do that just use a screwdriver like that and at the same time that you're doing that you can draw it out with your finger like that see and then we'll do the same thing down here you could use, you know, if it's really stuck on there, you could, with two hands, one, use the screwdriver to push this in and then pry out like that with another screwdriver. That would be fine, too. In this case, this one's not too terribly rusty. So I'll just pry that out like that. So it's not in the recess there. And then pull out with my finger. You know, this would be easier with two hands, but... We'll see here if we can do it. There it is. And then bring it out. There it is. See that? Like that. Perfect. Now, I'm going to take a screwdriver or a pry bar or whatever you want to use. And I'll go between the caliper and the outer radius of, or outer diameter or whatever of the rotor like that. Just kind of pry out like that to get things freed up. Now keep in mind you're on kind of a short leash because you have the electric connection or harness that goes to the parking brake there. So just don't overstress that. But usually once you have it kind of broken loose, then you can work it back and forth with your hand, use a screwdriver on this side, and get that loosened up. All right, so if I was just replacing the pads at this point, I would just pull these off. Sometimes you may want to use a screwdriver if they're really on there, but despite winter weather, these actually come off pretty easily. And I would just go ahead and replace those. But I, I actually recommend replacing the rotor if you can, if you can afford that, because the rotors are a little more expensive than the pads. But as opposed to $30 or $40 for pads, you're at about $100, $120 for pads and rotors. But the new pads will be, won't be seated to the original rotor. They're going to wear a little faster. The performance isn't going to be quite as good. That may not be quite as big of a deal in the rear of the vehicle, but you know most of your braking comes from the front. But that said, if you can afford it, it's a little bit extra uh, safety measure. Just go ahead and replace it all. So in order to get that rotor off, though, the bracket now needs to come off. So these 
here are 18 millimeter hex head. So I'll just go ahead and loosen those up. And now that I'm gonna be kind of in, underneath the vehicle, so to speak, I'm actually making sure that I got the vehicle well supported. I got wheel chocks on that side because you can't use the parking brake, right? Because otherwise the rotor, rotor and caliper would be clamped together. Um, and I have a jack stand and a high quality jack over there. So just make sure you are cautious that way. All right, so let's go ahead and get these off here. So just 18 millimeter and a ratchet. And I've already gone ahead and kind of broken those free because they do take a little bit of effort to get them loose. And then once we get those off, this whole, that whole bracket will come off and then we'll be able to remove the rotor. All right, so now with the rotor off, we can go ahead and install the new stuff. So I chose this brand. I actually got that stuff from Rock Auto, which is a pretty good company. It ships quickly, has decent prices and stuff. I mean, these are mid-grade, but the thing I really like about them is they actually have this coating on them keeps them from rusting. I'll actually show you the front ones have a similar coating. Those are a couple years old now, and, you know, the inner portion of the hub on the rotor is still uh, silver color so it just makes the vehicle look a little nicer uh, when you don't have you know rust falling off everywhere and you know, the OE, OE ones held up pretty well but you know they don't look as nice and again the smooth surface of this rotor will help mate to the new brake pads a lot better than using the original which although they look pretty smooth you know there are little tiny grooves in there all right so here's the new pads, uh, same same company there, PowerStop. Um, I've matched them up to make sure that they look correct. Uh, just in case you didn't know, these are the shims that go on the back of the pad, which keep them from squealing. If you don't have those shims, then you can buy this like blue um, gooey stuff. It looks a little like gasket maker, and just goes on the back there to keep them from squealing. The other thing to point your attention to is this little clip here is this the it's a squealer it helps to notify you that the pads are getting low so once the pads are low enough that will contact the brake rotor and every time you hit your brakes you'll hear a squealing noise so squealing can come from a lot of things but um, that can make a squealing noise alert you that your pads are getting really low and you know by the time you get down to the metal then your rotors are going to be shot um, sometimes um, uh, uh, if you ignore that okay so let's go ahead and get all this stuff back on there and uh, I am gonna put a little anti-seize that stuff there on some of the bolts and just around here just in case I ever need to get that apart again and make it a little easier and then a little bit of blue Loctite on the on the caliper bracket bolts and the caliper bolts you know, maybe a little overkill but that said I don't like bolts loosening up and I like things to come apart well so um, as we've seen on this channel, I almost always overdo everything, um, but works out well in the end, right? Okay, so let's get going. All right, so one thing I want to point your attention to are these pads. They're almost exactly the same, but the one that goes on the inside, so on the piston side of the caliper has this little clip here. So that's that one right there. Remember, on the piston side of the caliper, or the inside of the caliper, has that clip on it. All right, so now the rotor and the pads are installed, and 
Uh, keep in mind some of these rotors, well, actually most of them have a coating on them that you want to clean off, a little bit of oily, greasy substance. So use an inorganic solvent of some sort like paint thinner, lacquer thinner, brake clean works well. I just used starter fluid which is a decent organic solvent. Um, in any case, then um, because the thickness of the new pads is quite a bit more than the old pads, you need to compress the piston and the caliper. So a couple of steps to be able to, being able to do that, because this van has an electric parking brake, so this little motor here spins, uh, spins this gear here, which puts the parking brake out. So you need to back that off to be able to compress the piston. So first step, you take the cap off your master cylinder under the hood, so that's right there. That allows the fluid to flow back in there. It's a completed hydraulic system, so you need to allow for fluid to move from one to the other. And then you take a socket that fits onto here. Now the, the best socket to use is kind of like the opposite of those star-shaped or Torx bits. Okay, so it's like the it's the female version of a Torx bit. This one is called an, uh, I think this is a E12 right here. That's the one that fits. But honestly, it doesn't take a lot of torque to move that thing. So actually, even just a five point or a six point hex head socket would probably work just fine because it, it, it rotates really quite easily. So just kind of show you what that looks like here. So, so it goes, um, So we can go, see it just rotates pretty easily there, see? And then once you, and if you go the wrong way, it'll just come out more. So once you know you're going the right way, then you go until it's, it stops. You don't force it, till, but until it stops. And then use a clamp like this. Like a C-clamp works, but I like this better. It doesn't require that much force in this rubber pad. So then just kind of clamp that until the, piston is all the way in, okay? All right, so now here everything's back together except for this clip. So to put that back on, you just put these pieces, one on each side like that, and then push this into place like that. Oop. That one needs to be, there we are, okay. So now we're into place. Just need to push that in, there it is, and then you can see that those clips are kind of locked in there, okay? So that can't come out now, all right? So these tabs on, the clip tabs on the inner portion of this, and then make sure that that tab, U-shaped tab in there is positively locked onto the inside of this so it can't come out, okay? All right, so in the back, it looks like that. Um, I, I didn't specifically torque th these or the um, bracket ones, but the, the bracket bolts are big, so those should be pretty tight, so 80-ish foot-pounds, so you know, about as tight as your lug, nut, your lug nuts are. These are smaller, so those can't be quite as tight, but somewhere in the range of 20 to 30 foot-pounds would be my guess, so I just did uh, good and tight, but not too tight, if that makes sense. All right, so there we are. Now time to get the wheel back on. 
Um, and actually to do that, uh, I don't have a torque wrench for that either, but I have this here, it's called a torque limiting extension. So that gives us an approximately 100 foot pounds for those lug nuts. Uh, if you're curious how those work, I do have a separate video on that. All right, so there is the brake job. So those should work well for a number of years.